Hello. Can you hear me? All right. Awesome. So my name is Riley, and I'm going to talk about my journey. Um, and I'm used to talking to, like, little kids because I'm an elementary school teacher, so adults is new for me. <laughs> so I'm just going to pretend you're all kids, okay? <laughs> all right. So I call this uh, trans joy, my journey to becoming whole, um, and my pronouns are he, him, and his. Um, a little background about myself. Um, I grew up in uh, a warm, loving family. I grew up in the Bay Area, California. Um, I played sports my whole life, mostly soccer, um, until I finished college. And then, and as a kid, I played sports um, with my dad and sister. And I played soccer, basketball, and softball growing up. Um, and growing up as a kid, I just kind of had, I've always felt different from within myself, and I knew there was something different about me, the way I dressed, what made me comfortable, and I just didn't know what it was until I got about like 22 years old, and then I kind of figured some things out. Um, and as a family, we kind of grew up, we kind of grew up in the Episcopal Church. We would go um, on, the, on Sundays and holidays, and then as I got older and my sister got older, we played sports. It kind of just went to holidays um, as it fit in our schedule. Um, but I always found that the Episcopal Church never tried to, like, push an agenda on us, and I never, I never felt like I couldn't come into that space, being who I was, um, and as I've gotten older and I've learned a little bit more about that church, um, I've learned that they actually are accepting the church that I used to go to back home in California. Um, they even started a little LGBT um, group. Um, that would meet a couple times during the month. And I thought that was really cool to hear and to learn about. Um, so that's kind of a little bit about my background. Um, and what it means to be trans to me, um, for as long as I can remember, I just, I kind of struggled with who I was and um, learning that took some time to realize. Um, when I was in high school, that's when I met my best friend who was gay and she just, she didn't give a crap about what anybody said or did. And that kind of opened my eyes a little bit more. Um, I still got, in, in middle school and high school, even in elementary school, I was bullied for who I was. And so my best friend in high school just, she helped me kind of grow over the years and we're still best friends to this day. Um, and. I, that's when I learned that I, I liked girls, and that's, that was my first step. And then I got to college, and my junior year, I uh, took a year abroad, and that was the most transformative year of my life because I um, experienced new things and new cultures, and I learned a lot about myself, and that was the year that I actually cut my hair off for the very first time. And it was so euphoric, and I was like, this feels like me now. And then I got back from being abroad in Germany, and at the end of 2016 is when I came out as trans, and um, I shared this with my family and my friends, and they were all supportive and accepting. Um, I did with my mom. It took a little time, um, but she's come around, and she's still working on some things we work through every day, <laughs> but that's all right. Um, and... At the beginning of the year in 2017, I started taking testosterone, and then later that year in September, I had top surgery, um, and I'm forever grateful for the gender-affirming care that I received, and I still receive till this day. Um, it has truly saved my life. Um, I wouldn't be here without it, um, to say the least, and I'm so grateful for that. Um, and the next step in my journey is um, towards to getting towards bottom surgery. And I am starting, I just made a GoFundMe that I'll show in a little bit um, to help raise money for my surgeries and for, to also give to the trans community as well to help others who like me um, to pursue their authentic selves and live their life the way that they want to live their lives. Um, I have always been an advocate for the LGBT community. Um, I am such an advocate in my class. Um, I share that with my students. They see I wear t-shirts like this. I've got rainbows on me. I, 
all the time. They know that I'm an ally um, of some kind, and they, so I know I want to create that space for them um, in my classroom. And I hope to continue that work as I get into my new job um, teaching kindergarten. This, in like two weeks, I'll be teaching, having my own class again. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Um, thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I've come a long way since high school, and here I am today to live and to be my authentic self um, and to share my journey with others and so that others can feel inspired as well. Um, I hope that with my story that others can feel that they can either reach out to me or that they can feel that they can be themselves, no matter what people say and what society says um, about us. Um, I created this GoFundMe with um, the help of my beautiful girlfriend, um, Rachel. That's my girlfriend. <laughs> um, and she has kind of helped me realize, because I kind of got some pushback from my mom around this GoFundMe, and I, I took it down for a brief time and on my social media, and then we, me and her talked, and I talked with my therapist again, and just realizing that like this is not for her, this is for me, and I know my family would help me out with this, but I also know that at the end of the day, this is my journey, and I'm gonna do what I want to do to get to that, um, to my goal. Um, in life. So I hope that um, I have the link up there and Devin can, I'll send it to Devin too. If you guys want to, you can either share or donate if you're willing and able. Um, I don't ever want to force anybody to do something that they're not willing to do or able to do and that's okay. Um, even just sharing with, on your social media is totally okay with me. Um, I'm very open on my social media about my journey and my story. And yeah, I just, yeah. So, is there any questions? Maybe? <laughs> I'm open to any questions you may have. Yeah? Uh, I, I think you're commenting on how um, there was a part of your journey that kind of like saved your life, and I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, so um, before, like, in the beginning of my transition when I came out and like before I started um, testosterone, I had really bad depression and I was hospitalized for it for a few days. Um, and just coming out of that and then going through therapy for the first time, very intense, and then starting hormones and getting ready for top surgery that same year, just kind of made me realize that this is something that I want, and then this is something that's going to save my life. Um, because I was in a dark place, and I don't know where I would be today without these life-saving um, surgeries and hormones. Yeah. Yeah? Can you talk more about the way that your family set you up for success on this journey? Um, may that be raising you, giving you whatever they gave you as far as support and love. Yeah, so my family was pretty supportive. It was very, I think in the beginning, especially when I first, the first time I ever came out as gay, my, my dad doesn't really share emotions, <laughs> but my mom always kind of had her way of thinking, and she still does, and she just kind of, um, kind of pushed it off as like, because at the time during, I played soccer and there was a girl on the team who was gay, and she kind of thought that I was gay because she was gay, was just kind of her thought process, unfortunately. Um, but over time, it just kind of slowly, I think that went away for her, and she learned more. And then when I came out as trans, um, that was very hard on my mom. She, like a lot of um, trans kids hear from their families, is that they, we always hear that from parents that someone died and that's really hard to hear because you're sitting right there and your mom is telling you that they feel like somebody had just died and you're like I'm not nobody died I'm still sitting right here I'm still the person you raised me to be I'm just whole and I'm just going to become the person that I was always meant to be um, and it took her some time and eventually a few months later she came around and 
it was kind of funny. We went on a trip to Disney World, and our first day, she goes, so I guess today's the day that we're going to call you Riley. We're going to start using Riley. And I was like, my mom just said that. <laughs> the one who was bawling her eyes at me months ago, and now she says this. And it just, like, broke my heart in, like, a very special way because I was like, oh, my gosh. She's actually going out of her way to find and research. And she and my dad, I guess, had gone to some some group and learned more about what it meant to be trans and yeah. Yeah. What were some ways that your friends um, specifically were supportive or maybe some ways things you wish your friends would have been ways that they would have been more supportive? Yeah, I would say that the majority I was very fortunate that all my friends didn't no one ever um, left my friend circle because of who I was. And everyone who I know who's still in my life has always loved and supported me throughout my journey. And even now, they're all very excited for my next step in this journey. And um, it brings me joy that I have such great friends who have been so supportive and loving towards me during this whole process. Yeah. You mentioned that you, uh, your mom is still like day to day in some difficulties. So what do you, um, what do you still need to hear or hope to hear from your mom? Um, I kind of, for my mom, I kind of hope that she will kind of allow me to be the adult that I am because I am 28. I'm going to be 29 this year. So for her, I think she's holding on to that me and my sister too, we're both, that we're both kids. I think they're holding on to that and that's hard. And so I'm now I'm kind of learning boundaries and being like this, this is what I'm doing and I, I know I have your support through it all, but this is what I'm doing and I need you to accept that. And so I need her to understand that, um, that she can't always help me. And I know she can't always help me, but, and I'm doing this for me and I'm not doing this for you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how can we all be better allies to the trans community? Um, how can we be better and help support? Yeah, I think for allies, it's to support the trans community, for one, is to um, actually show up instead of, you know, people just like saying X, Y, or Z, but actually doing X, Y, or Z and showing up for our community and... Um, being that ally for us and showing others what it means to love everyone for who we are and respecting pronouns for one. That's a great thing um, to start with. Um, I think something that I've tried to do now especially is just assume everyone is they until they tell me otherwise. <laughs> it's kind of where I've been trying to get my mindset. It's hard to do, but you you know we train our minds to do that. And um, yeah, and just kind of just sharing that you're not gonna be someone who's just gonna say blah, like, yes, I'm an ally of the LGBT community during June. And then some people do that, and that's just all people do. And it's like, that's not enough, especially with what's going on right now, it's not enough. And we need as many allies as we can to support us and to be here with us as we fight this fight. Um, because we can't fight this fight alone, um, and neither can you guys fight this fight. So we're all in this together, and to work together um, as one instead of as separating each other from each other. Because that's not that's not that's showing right now that that's not it's not working. It creates more hate and less love in the world. Anyone else? How can uh, families build a better and more um, approachable environment for children to be their like, authentic selves? Yeah, that's a great question. I think that, like, especially because I'm a teacher, um, I know I don't have kids yet myself, but these are my kids <laughs> in my class. So I think that we can just let our kids express themselves um, through, like, what they wear and, and not being, like, you have to wear this 
and just, and even with little kids, like we can even just set out clothes and have like gender neutral clothes or we can have blue or pinks and just set them out and let the kid choose what they want to wear that day instead of being like, you have to wear this because it's, it says this, but it's not. They, you know, putting us in a box, which we're not in a box. We're not all in this little box that they say we're in. It doesn't exist. Um, and allowing kids to come to us and share those feelings with us um, and letting them know that they are in a safe space um, is the biggest thing that I've learned. Um, I've had a lot of kids come up to me and they'll tell me certain things, um, or they'll ask me about my, I have, why I have this, or they'll ask me why I wear these bracelets, and I tell them why, and I say that I'm an ally and I support um, the community, and I haven't shared a lot of my students, because I'm a substitute right now, the, I can't really share that information about myself because it's not my class, and, but I hope to that my goal in life is to be open and out to my students and my parents um, and to have that safe space for them to come to when they feel like they have no one else to come to. And just having like a widespread of like books is a great thing because if we just read that there's mom and dad, that's just, that's what all they're gonna see. But if we say, oh look, it's mom and dad, or there's just a dad, or mom and mom and dad and dad, or here's a trans parents, um, and just like exposing them to more in obviously age appropriate ways. Um, but there are just so many kids books out there nowadays that are incredible for kids to read. And I love that so much. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit more about how it felt to finally feel like you could be your authentic self and be who you felt like you were? Yeah, I would say that um, probably from between 2017 and now, um, I would say more so now, I've finally become feeling like I can just be who I am without judgment and I can go around and I can wear my pride stuff that I wear every day and not feel like people are gonna just come up to me and judge me and if they do, I just kind of, I'm like, all right, well, that's your opinion. You can walk away from me if you don't want me in your life. I, that's not my problem. And especially now with the community that I've built here in Seattle over the past five years, um, I found and I've come, I have a lot of older friends and just having them is a great support because they don't, they don't even care. They don't care. They're just like, you know what? We are who we are and we love who we love. And if you don't want to be in my life or accept that, then that's fine. You don't have to. And so I've just really embraced who I am and, I, and I've, um, I've just loved who I've become and where my journey is headed. Yeah. You have a question, sweetie? <laughs> Anyone else have? Yeah. Um, it's a little bit of a fuzzy question. I mean, maybe for, for you, you said you, you always are from a young age felt like there was something different. Uh, do you think the realization of what that kind of different thing was, maybe it came as a, well, a young adult? Mm -hmm. Do you think that the time that it took to get there was more a function of just who you were? Or do you think it was also the community you were around? For example, if you had grown up in a world class and been exposed and, and had more clarity and, and had somebody that was there that can kind of explain what maybe you had, do you think would were you kind of the light bulb would have gone off earlier or maybe not? I think it might have. Yeah, I think there's a lot of, I've like done a lot of work um, myself um, with my therapist and as I'm doing this work and I'm learning and I'm going back and I'm thinking back to my childhood because I don't remember a lot from my childhood and, and I don't know why, but as I start to find things that pop up in my brain and I see things and I'm like, 
there's a lot like for me I knew in elementary school I've always wore like just t-shirts shorts and I remember one day I finally I wore a shirt that said um, tough guys wear pink and I remember this girl just came up to me and we're in like fourth or fifth grade and she like picked on me because I had this shirt and she told me that that was for guys and I was like okay but you're not wearing this shirt <laughs> and it has nothing to do with you it's just something that I wanted and I wanted to wear so just like little things that I'm realizing and that I've done and I even remember in like middle school I would actually I watched trans guys on YouTube share their stories but in middle school I had no idea I had no idea what that meant and then fast forward to now I'm like wow there's a lot of things that I've actually like there were signs that I knew but I just didn't know because I wasn't exposed I didn't have that I didn't I didn't meet my my best friend until I was in high school so I didn't know anything about the community until I was in high school unfortunately and that's kind of that's really sad to me and that's why I want to be that advocate and that for my students in my classroom in elementary school and show them that they can explore and express themselves in the way that they want to express themselves because I never got to and I didn't know how to Yeah, thank you. I'm so grateful that you have such a heart for kids because our country needs educators uh, who do have heart for kids and a heart for inclusion. So thank you for what you're doing. I'm glad you're a part of our community. Uh, can we give another round of applause of support for Riley? Um, Riley is available for questions. If you all have, have any questions um, about anything, you can reach out to him. As we close, would you pray with me? God, beloved one, who is non-binary, we offer our thanks for the holy witness and the lives of LGBTQIA community and people. In queer love and in trans and intersex bodies, we experience Christ enfleshed. In the faith of those bodies who've been persecuted by the church, Christ is revealed. In the queer practices of community, of love that takes risks, and of telling the truth even when it's costly, Christ lives on. In gratitude for these and all the sacred gifts of the LGBTQIA community, we give our thanks. We offer these gifts. We go in peace. We go in love. Amen. <laughs>